Welcome back to the channel, Warhammer Man back in the studio, and today we're working on an Adeptus Custodius commission in Fast Forward. Uh, basically going to be from start to finish. I uh, went ahead and did some uh, assembly, drilled out a couple spaces for uh, magnets, and then uh, primed everything white, uh, and went ahead and used the white, uh, apothecary white uh, contrast paint to get our armor and set up and everything. This is going to be the uh, Adeptus Custodes uh, Solar Watch, uh, sort of like spin-off, so it's blue instead of red. It uh, uses a combination of regular paints, metallics, and uh, the uh, Citadel color contrast paints as well uh, to achieve a pretty nice looking white armor. could be used for anything from like White Scars, uh, Sisters of Battle, Adeptus Custodes, uh, pretty much just any white uh, you're planning on doing so. Uh, but uh, basically just going to run through it in fast forward and I'll go ahead and narrate through as we go. So uh, like I said, uh, we have uh, four of our Dawn Eagle jet bikes, the Veritas Praetors. One of them is a converted shield captain uh, with like some extra little uh, stuff to show him off and kind of set him apart from the rest of the squad. And then we've got five uh, Deptus Custodes with a uh, sword and board. So, And uh, if you're curious how I did the uh, magnetizations and everything, I have a uh, video for that as well. Go back and check those out. It shows you how to magnetize not only the uh, spear arms, but the uh, base stands or flight stands as well. Uh, and then also, uh, you'll see at the end there, I did some custom bases, the uh, ruined temple style bases, uh, which again, you can go and check out some of the previous videos for walkthroughs. So uh, here we're starting off with the uh, blue. Um, this one is the uh, one of the Citadel contrast paints uh, as well. Uh, it's the bright blue Talisar blue. Uh, and what I do is go ahead and just do like all the cloth that uh, we want blue in that color. And then you'll notice we go through and uh, just do one step at a time. I do everything uh, assembly line style. And I do sort of like uh, pre-assemble some stuff, but then leave other stuff on sprues as well. So uh, you'll notice I have all the heads mounted on like a convenient head rack. I uh, reuse those. I spend a little time to make them in the beginning and then reuse them literally like dozens or even like a hundred times. Uh, commission after commission and just clean it up with a razor blade and just pop on the heads and go straight through. I clean all the mold lines and everything off ahead of time and then do my sub assemblies. I have specific ways that I cut out things like the shoulder pads so that they stay mounted on their initial sprues. Uh, and if something can't be cut out in that way, I'll do like similar for like the head rack or you'll notice like the small shields as well. So uh, here I'm just going through and putting on like an initial coat of that uh, Tesseract, uh, Talisar blue rather. Uh, and, uh, you know, just make sure you shake it up real nice. I use the uh, little mixer balls as well from Army Painter inside there. And then you'll notice I've transferred over quite a few of the uh, Games Workshop paints, the regular paints, into uh, Army Painter bottles as well. And then I swap the labels also. Uh, if you just water them down slightly, you don't even need to use like a funnel or anything like that. You can just carefully uh, sort of pour them right in. And again, with some mixing balls and everything, they work out perfectly. Uh, and you'll notice also that uh, here, while I'm doing the uh, gold, this is Retributor Armor Gold, I'm not using a wet palette. Um, you can use a wet palette with like regular Citadel paints just fine. But uh, essentially, like the cleanup for wet palettes can be a pain. Like I paint literally every single day, uh, being a commission painter and whatnot. But for most people, a wet palette's probably not the best idea because, you know, they can go bad and get moldy. Uh, you have to throw out the sheets, you have to replace them, you have to clean them, do all that stuff. Uh, a lot of times what I'll just use is leftover like plastic or just a plastic bag like I'm using here. So uh, the plastic stops the paint from getting like the moisture from getting sucked out of the paint uh, the same way that like a piece of paper or something like that would. Uh, but, uh, you know, essentially using like slightly watered down Citadel paints in the bottles allows them to flow and actually like coat uh, a little bit better and a little bit more even. Uh, and then also obviously uh, being a little watered down already, I don't have to worry about the wet palette. Uh, they stay relatively moist for longer uh, on some plastic like I'm doing here. So uh, once again, just going through and applying a nice coat of Retributor Armor. And, uh, you know, just being careful not to get any excess paint anywhere that I've already painted with the white. Uh, the key for being like efficient, um, not only is like the assembly line style that you see uh, demonstrated inside this video, but also just being careful not to have to like fix mistakes. Uh, if you do make a mistake, you can obviously go back and fix it. Uh, but it's important that you pay attention to where potential mistakes would be like need to be fixed. And then if you can like kind of focus a potential mistake to an area that's not painted yet, uh, you can stop from having to go back and fix stuff left and right. So 
Uh, you'll notice also that I use my pinky to stabilize everything with my brush hand. Uh, so I have like my pinky up against whatever I'm painting or up against my other hand and it stabilizes my hand, stops me from having any like nervous or like ticks or shakes or anything like that. Uh, and then just basically allows me to be like more stable and more precise. Uh, you'll notice also that um, I actually use only uh, in this entire video, I think like maybe two or three brushes total. Uh, you don't have to have a ton of nice brushes. I use mostly like cheap knockoff uh, brushes that you can get like super cheap uh, from Amazon or China or whatever you do. Um, and uh, basically just go through and, you know, use specific one for metallics and only use that brush for metallics as they tend to like get ruined faster. And then I use like, a, you know, one for my regular paints as well. Uh, don't use like the smallest, tiniest little detail brush because uh, it doesn't hold as much paint and doesn't get quite as good a coverage. Uh, you know, you really don't need like the tiniest brush and you don't need everything to be perfect. It's very easy to just gain control over time uh, with a nice brush with a decent tip on it. So uh, just my suggestions. You can obviously do whatever you like. If you want to buy expensive $20 brushes, that's fine. But uh, I typically get um, like a pack of nine all different sizes for like nine bucks. Uh, and then you can buy them in bulk too. So you can get a few packs to save another buck or two as well. So. Uh, but I use everything from like the triple zero all the way up to the nine, uh, depending if I'm painting like terrain or doing like details, like tiny little eyes, etc. So, uh, and you'll notice also that uh, I use a few different metallics and a few different uh, of the Citadel contour contrast paints rather. Um, you know, I like a combination of both, like the traditional line and the contrast paints. You'll notice that certain things the contrast paints do, you could never achieve like that nice of a white uh, with your typical citadel paints and also it saves you so many steps having to do like a highlight and a wash all built into one and then you'll notice also that like you know the metallics once they're just slightly watered down uh you know really flow nicely and coat extremely well uh you know initially when i painted with games workshop paints like years and years ago 20 years ago i never used to water them down figured that they came exactly how they were meant to be used but, uh, you know, the more time you use them, the more you realize that uh, even a brand new paint, as soon as you crack it open, a lot of times are just way too thick. Uh, you know, so you want to have like a little bit better, like a little less of a thickness to it. Uh, so if you have to do like a second coat sometimes here and there, you can. But the majority of the time you get one nice coat. So I think you'll notice a couple times in the video, I actually go back and do just a slight bit more of the metallics. Uh, part of that is also my fault that I may have just watered them down uh, just slightly too much. Uh, but if you put those mixing balls in and use the little dropper bottles, uh, in my opinion, you're going to be so much better off. And then also, uh, you know, skipping the wet palette and just using a little piece of plastic that you can throw away when you're done. You don't have to worry about anything. Uh, you know, just preference. But obviously, I have a wet palette. I've used it a million times. And in the end, I still end up doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, now, if you're mixing paints, that's a completely different situation. Uh, when I used to mix my paints all the time before I had a complete line, uh, you know, I'd use like 12 or 15 paints and just mix everything I needed in between, uh, in which case a wet palette was extremely useful because I would have all my different mixes there and they would stay moist and I could do better blends and whatnot and match colors from like one session to the next. Uh, but the truth is, once you have a nice range of paints and everything, like I have the full uh, Citadel contrast paints and the majority of Games Workshop's regular paints, you really don't need to mix anything. You have more than enough. So uh, in many cases, you have too many. Uh, stop just buying every single paint as there's tons of them I've never used. And also with the uh, contrast line as well, uh, you know, to tell you the truth, uh, I've opened them all and they've all got mixing bottle uh, balls in them and everything. I uh, don't switch those over into the dropper bottles. I use them just how they come. They work perfectly right out of the container. They don't get all the drying paint up in the lids and everything. Uh, I absolutely love them. They're also a little bit larger. Uh, I'm a big fan of the contrast paints. You definitely get what you pay for. They are phenomenal paints. Uh, but in the end, you know, buying the whole set, I think it's like 34 or 36 of them. Completely unnecessary. Um, I have had them, I think, just about a year now. I've had the full set of paints and I'm a commission painter. I literally paint every day. And uh, the truth is I pretty much use the same probably five or six of them over and over again. I highly recommend Tesseract Blue. I'm sorry. No, that's one of the new ones. Uh, the Talisar Blue that I'm using here. Uh, the Black Templar Black is extremely nice as well. Um, one of the browns, there's a bunch of different ones you can use. I like the snake bite leather or, uh, there's a couple other nice ones as well, but you really only need one of those. Uh, and then also skeleton horde is great for like skulls and, uh, you know, like, uh, purity seals and stuff like that. The, I believe it's blood angels red. The red one is really good. Uh, 
what else i mean just basically like one of each color essentially is all you really need the white is obviously phenomenal um the apothecary white is absolutely great i've been through more of those than anything else but uh in the end you know you can just kind of see what you need and fill in the blanks accordingly but uh you know it's completely unnecessary i think for me or for a regular person to ever just buy the complete line of those uh, as there's tons of them i've never used before you probably don't need to have like two or three different purples uh the yellow is really nice um not the griff charger one uh it's the other one i can't think of the name off the top of my head uh but it's like the the lighter of the yellows that one is absolutely phenomenal i used that one on the uh uh, Necromunda gang that I paint up in a different video and the yellow that you achieve it's like a like a yellow with a slight bit of orange to it, it looks absolutely phenomenal so uh, but here back to the uh, custodes I'm just going through now and uh, still just painting in all the little bits of gold uh, all the tiny little accents and everything I've got uh, about the majority of it done here uh, slowly working my way up to the actual bikes themselves uh, the bikes have quite a bit of gold and silver that goes on them, uh, but the majority of the rest of the commission is coming along nicely and uh, just about done. Uh, when it's all said and done, I think I sped up this video uh, 10x speed. So uh, when it's all said and done, I believe it's about an hour long video. And uh, I think it took me about, I want to say it was 8 or 10 hours to uh, paint this commission. Uh, and give or take, like the assembly is a couple hours on top of that, magnetization. Uh, but, uh, you know, obviously it's completely different than just sitting down and painting steady. But uh, the assembly is a little bit longer, so a couple hours for that as well. And then uh, obviously just like priming and letting everything dry. I use like just a nice coating white primer um, and then going through and actually doing like the uh, white over top with the uh, contrast paint is not in this video. So I think when it's all said and done, I probably spent about 20 hours total on this commission. So, you know, one solid sit down for an entire day or, uh, you know, a few eight hour days, uh, could easily knock out something like this, a great, like starter army, not quite a battalion or anything like that. Uh, but, uh, just shy of it and definitely a nice, you know, with custodies, they obviously are very expensive points wise. Uh, so, you know, in this case you have nine models and, uh, you know, nice little starter army. Uh, basically I, I think like this is pretty much the equivalence of, uh, you know, like a, uh, what? Well, like a little starter set for custodians they don't have like a regular one um but uh you know essentially you have one box of the troops and then you could potentially make one of them a shield captain and then you have one box of bikes with an extra bike that's converted to a shield captain and you'll notice when i get to the uh shield captain bike as well uh the conversions if you haven't seen it in the previous videos essentially what i've done is uh, i take the one of the extra shields um actually it's a leftover in this case because i used all the shields but uh, one of the extra shields I have and then I uh, cut off the back of it and kind of clean it up and mount it flush to the top of the bike and then uh, I'll go through and cut up an extra banner or in this case the banner that came with the set I use like the two wing pieces that you would normally glue to the banner and then I leave the chains hanging off the bottom but I cut off like the little extra bits like the little uh, fur and like the little um, I don't know what they're called like little pieces of paper or parchment or whatever that are hanging from it. I cut those off and then I mount it in front of the handlebars, sort of like a handlebar guard. And it looks like little wings off the sides, kind of like project protecting him like he was going to joust or something. Uh, and then I use, uh, in this case, I've got a regular shield captain head or the one that comes on the bikes. I like the regular one for the biker because it doesn't have his mouth open. Anyone that's ever ridden like a motorcycle or anything fast uh, knows that you wouldn't have your mouth open if you were going fast on one of them or you'd be like eating bugs and getting gravel in your teeth uh, so I use the one off the regular custodies uh, and then the final step also you'll see I have the uh, cape from the regular custodies box as well uh, and uh, I use that mount that onto the back of the biker so in order to do that obviously I'm working on the uh, shield captain's bike right here the relic jet bike conversion I leave off the back fin so if you leave off the back fin you can mount the uh, little cape like hanging off of him there too so and if you've ever watched uh, the Incredibles you know that their rule on capes does not apply here. Uh, definitely use the capes. I think it looks super cool. So uh, just going through, kind of doing everything up here. Uh, if you ever wanted to do this conversion yourself, uh, it's very popular and super cool. I have a video showing exactly how I do it and everything. Uh, how I do the magnetizations of not only the uh, flight stands, but also the uh, lance arms for the custodies as well. Uh, very important for transportation. Just to make sure they don't break. Uh, ease of use and like it's obviously cool to be able to pose your guys uh, so you can kind of move them around for pictures or for gameplay so uh, once again just kind of picking out the last little bits of uh well we're still on the gold here working through 
uh, we'll make our way to the uh, silver next and then we'll do uh, the brown as well um, all of these are either the citadel metallics transferred over into army painter bottles uh, and i highly recommend highly recommend those little metal balls that you can get uh you know they're so cheap you get 50 of them in a pack and um you know they're stainless steel good quality uh definitely just buy the good ones and same with the bottles as well you can buy cheap ones on amazon and everything but i've heard all kind of horror stories from people when you're going to like squeeze out your paint and they'll get like a little clog and then they just blow out the top and then you got like paint all over the place god forbid you hit something that you're in the middle of painting and mess it up uh, you know i just buy like the army painter bottles they're a little smaller they're 12 ounces but they basically fit like an entire citadel paint inside of them uh as the citadel paints are 12 ounces as well uh, and then you can throw a little ball in there and uh, you never have to worry about that happening uh take the little labels off the citadel paints as well and uh, transfer them over onto my little army painter bottles so it says exactly what they are but again i'd rather just pay a little bit extra to not have to worry about the nightmare of one of them busting open on my table or worse yet like you know not only ruining the model that you've already painted, but, you know, maybe losing like 4 or $5 worth of paint or whatever. So uh, here you can see I'm using the uh, Black Templar Black and just going through and doing a couple little spots uh, with that black. Uh, and, uh, you know, essentially, uh, if you've never used this paint before, it's absolutely great. It works awesome for like uh, your bolter casings and stuff like that, like uh, on like regular guns for like Space Marines and whatnot. Um, definitely, definitely recommend it. It works phenomenally well and uh you know coats extremely nice uh if you do have like something like a lighter color underneath it or a metallic sometimes you'll have to do like just a little bit of a touch up uh but overall it uh works extremely well so i use it for on these custodies i use it for like the backs of the uh like armor there's like a little soft piece basically it's like the cloth underneath or whatever you want to picture it as rubber cloth whatever it is and uh basically just uh gives them a little bit of an accent and then uh, go around like the waist and uh, the bits in the arms where they bend at, etc. So um, once again, I love the contrast paints because you can paint right out of the bottle. Uh, they're definitely like, I don't know what you want to call them, watered down, but it's more like the uh, median that's in them, like the contrast median. Uh, just allows them to essentially act as a regular paint, a wash and a uh, highlight all in one single step. So it gives you like the step of basically like three different paints all in one. Uh, they don't work perfectly for everything, but overall work great. And here you can see I'm using it essentially how I would for a Space Marine like bolter casing. Uh, it is important also to uh, shake them up uh, pretty well in the beginning. Uh, having the ball bearing inside definitely works, but uh, if you look at the bottoms of them, you can see the actual like pigment uh, will sink to the bottoms and turn into like a little... I don't know what you want to call it, like a crust or like sedimentary buildup on the bottom of your paints. And when you put that ball in there, uh, like especially, and shake it up real good, you will notice like the different colored kind of sediment getting like knocked off of there. And uh, after you've like shaken it up real well, uh, they look perfect. And speaking of, I mentioned it a couple times, but the Tesseract Green is technically like a Citadel uh, technical paint, technically a technical paint. But uh, in all reality, it's basically the same as uh, one of these contrast paints. And I absolutely love it. Uh, I actually use it in this video for like their little screens and eyes and stuff like that. Definitely recommend it. But that is the one that settles worse than anything else I've ever seen. So uh, here I'm on to the uh, lead belcher, onto the silver. So the uh, gold and black and blue are pretty much all done now. Uh, just going through and doing a nice coat of lead belcher. Uh, this is one of the ones, again, where I have it watered down like a decent amount. Uh, just using water, I didn't use special median or anything in it. Uh, so it coats real nice, but, you know, occasionally I will have to go through and touch up a couple spots. Uh, but it essentially gives you, lead belcher is sort of a darker silver, but uh, if you water it down just a little bit, it sort of gives you the effect, uh, once again, of like uh, highlight and regular paint in a single stroke. Like now I do go back here later on and do washes. Like I do the uh, uh, Nullin oil over all of like the silver and uh, I do the... Oh, uh, what is it i use on the brown reichland flesh shade on all the gold um and then sometimes on like brown or i'll use like the uh null oil on brown but uh essentially like i still do the wash but it kind of takes out like the highlight phase now i will often come back and still do a highlight over top of it depending on the level of commission uh but you'd be absolutely like amazed at uh, how much just a little bit of uh watering down your paint can do and uh, how much extra depth you get out of it so but again you'll notice sort of on like the lances here i do have to do like a second coat just because it's uh like a little too watery um sometimes it uh kind of like leaves a little spot without uh without the metallic on it so 
again, that's partially my fault too. Uh, I've done a couple of these with the bottles where, um, you know, when I switch it over to the bottle, I put a little bit less water into it uh, to kind of thin it down and it worked better. But uh, sometimes trying to get like the last bit out of there uh, sort of like gets a little too watery. So uh, just knocking out the rest of the silvers here. Uh, nothing too crazy. Just keeping it clean. Uh, you'll notice once again that uh, I've only used two brushes in the whole video so far. I used one for the non-metallics and one for the metallics. Uh, and again, the reason I do that is you don't want to get any like residual metallic buildup into your like regular colors. So there's like little speckles or anything. Looks like glitter. Or maybe you do. I don't know. And I did not though. Um, and then uh, so the silver and gold work fine uh, interchanging. And then also it ruins your brush. So I'll typically use like an older kind of ruined brush already uh, for my metallics. Uh, once it's kind of like starting to fray out a little bit and uh, like feathery like tips. Uh, but again, you know, I try to get like good use out of everything. But, uh, you know, being a commission painter, if I threw away my brushes after every use, uh, you know, I don't even use nine brushes, obviously, on a single commission. And uh, like I said, I spend typically like six to nine dollars total on them. So uh, you can more than afford to throw away all your brushes and never have to worry about it. But uh, of course, waste not, want not. So. I'm just going through here and doing my typical um, like kind of paint job on these. I've done quite a few uh, of the solar watch specifically uh, with the blue instead of red. Um, pretty used to it, how these colors work together and everything. I also do like a similar paint scheme for Sisters of Battle. Kind of reminds me of like the old school World Eaters uh, paint scheme too from like Horus Heresy type stuff. Uh, but you'll notice I go through everything like pretty smooth. Occasionally I'll miss a spot. Uh, if I notice I missed something, um, you know, I won't even go back to it right away. I'll wait till I have that color back out for something else. Uh, just all about efficiency and taking your time and using that pinky for like uh, steadying my brush hand as well. So uh, just in case you're curious too, uh, this video is reversed. I'm actually a righty, uh, but just the way I had the camera set up specifically for this video, uh, everything is flipped. So I don't know if that makes a difference to anyone or if you put it in like slow motion and we're trying to read like the paint colors, like the names, I think they would probably be backwards. Uh, you can see like the board has a little writing on it. It's backwards as well. So, uh, but you know, just basically going through here, working through everything, uh, just slow and steady. You'll notice a lot of times too, that I will shift the model. So it's convenient for my brush hand rather than trying to do like something crazy. Uh, that's something like that I picked up as well. Uh, part of like, you know, the, like factory style, like just assembly line paint job is uh, it's easier to like move the model to your hand than it is to move your hand to the model. So, and then also like putting out just smaller amounts of paint and never using like the same spot twice. I uh, will notice I do that as well. So I have a bunch of different dabs of gold and then a bunch of silver, etc. cetera. Uh, the reason I do that is uh, when you put like new paint on top of old paint, uh, the old paint sort of dried and it'll end up like little crusty flaky bits in there. And sometimes that'll come off into your fresh paint and you don't want that to happen. So once again, you know, another reason that I like to use plastic and uh, you'll notice there's not that much paint left over. Uh, I always put a little less out than what I need. Uh, but in the end, the fact that you're not sitting there with your Citadel paint like open, drying out the whole time while you paint saves exponentially more paint than you could ever save. Just pouring some out and having extra that you don't use. So I uh, highly recommend the dropper bottles. Uh, definitely, you know, I know you can get a ton of them um, cheap on Amazon. I think you can get like 50 for like 10 bucks or 15 bucks on Amazon. Or you can buy the Army Painter ones like I do. And you get like uh, six for like three or four dollars. So that's the way I go. But again, you know, being a commission painter and not having to worry about a random top blowing off or wasting a paint that I needed. And it's my last one. And there's none locally. So I have to wait a week for one to come in, etc. Uh, it can be a total pain in the butt, so I can't really take those chances. I'd rather not take those chances, or maybe I'm just spoiled. I don't know. But as you can see here, uh, we have knocked out the majority of this commission already, probably about uh, a little over halfway or about halfway through the video, uh, and uh, really making progress, obviously. Um, in this case, we are using uh, brown. I can't remember exactly which brown this is. Uh, I'll have all the paint descriptions in the bottom of the video or you can check out the video of the uh, finished commission that I kind of like show them off which I'll actually probably pin at the end of this one as well uh, so you can just watch through this video and see like the final finished deal. I uh, can't remember which round I used for this one uh, but it obviously is another one of the Citadel contrast paints and again it does an absolutely phenomenal job on all the leather. Uh, so I'll use this basically for I believe the seats, uh, the leather of the... Um, uh, like the leg guards or whatever and then the arm guards 
and maybe a couple other little spots here and there. But uh, overall, it gives... I like this one, this brown specifically, because it has a nice dark that kind of runs into uh, like the cracks, but overall dries like sort of like a medium brown. So it goes well with the gold, but it still stands out clearly from the gold. And then it's also not too dark that it like doesn't look right with like the brightness of the white armor and the blue. So uh, overall, you know, it's about all about color selection, I think, really, that makes everything look good. Because if you use a really dark brown, it might look like black and kind of not match. Or if you use one that's a little too light, it's too close to the gold color. And then at a glance, it just looks like more gold or the gold looks like brown, etc. Uh, so, you know, we kind of work these things out here. Uh, you'll notice on the driver's arms, I'm kind of dodging like the one little panel and leaving it white. Um, if you mess up a little bit on that panel, just go back through and kind of clean it up with the white. But we're going to go in later on with that Tesseract green. And we're going to turn those into like a little uh, screen. And then also we do that on the monitor of the bikes, like the little display screen. And uh, you'll notice that they like come out really nice with like a nice brightness. And uh, all you have to do basically is put on a nice coat or two of that Tesseract green. And then just go back and put like one little tiny dot of white. So, uh, so here we are. Uh, I think I was just touching up a couple of the custodes bits I missed there on the helmets. Um, doing the seats on the bikes. Are we on to the silver now? Yikes, I'm not sure what I'm doing here. Oh, the blue on the handlebars. That's what it was. There's tiny little bits on the handlebar grips. I'm doing just a little bit of blue on them as well. And sort of like the little uh, spots on the uh, uh, the swords where you like grip them. The And then these are like the little uh, ponytails or whatever you want to call them. Little top knots for the custodes. Uh, so I just do basically a nice coating on one side. Not worrying about where my fingers are at. Let those dry off for a little while, do something else, and then once they're completely dry, I'll go back and do the rest. Uh, here I'm doing the missiles. Uh, in this case, I just provided, the client specifically asked for the bolters and the missiles. Uh, if you ever put these together before, you don't need to magnetize them or anything. But um, once you push them in, like the little spots, they're like push fit in there. You're probably never going to get them out again. So whatever you decide uh, to put in there is probably going to be permanent. Uh, so it's very important that you uh, make up your mind. I always use the bolters. Um, there's probably a couple cases, if you have some extra points or something, where the missiles could be useful. But uh, in my experience, you know, you don't want to spend extra points on your bikes as everybody's going to be trying to shoot them anyway. So maybe you caught a glimpse of uh, what I was using right there. This is the uh, Gilliman fr Flesh, actually. Uh, I'm using that for the actual flesh. That's another really nice one. I love that for flesh tone. Uh, you might want a couple different flesh tones too if you're painting like fantasy stuff or whatever. Uh, like I use on Warcry, Warbands and stuff like that. Uh, quite a few different ones just so I have like different skin tones just for a little more like realism as everybody's not like the same color. Uh, but uh, Gilliman Flesh is by far the best one in my opinion. So here we're doing the green. So I just go through and I'm real careful about this here. And if you get a little too much on, you can kind of touch it up or if you need to come back and do a second one. Um, now here on the bikes, you'll notice after I do it, I flip them upside down. Uh, that's just because what I want to happen is I want the darkest of the green to settle towards the top of the lens. So once it dries, I can go back in and put a little more and kind of fill out the lens like uh, if I need to. But the key that I do is like with gemstones and stuff like that, I leave the top the darkest or screens. I leave the top the darkest and the bottom like progressively lighter and then i'll put a tiny little white dot in the top like left corner the darkest part of it uh if you do it the other way around which a lot of people do they'll put the dark at the bottom like fading up to light then when you put the white dot on there it sort of just like blends in and doesn't have like that same realistic look so uh here i'm using like the uh it's like the turquoise one on there i never had used this color before um i used it on a previous like commission for the custodes it came out good overall um it's sort of almost like a jade color i like it but it's a little too thin to tell you the truth like just how it comes uh it needs like a little more pigment in it honestly uh you end up having to do like two or three coats of this to get like the color i was looking for i think this would look a little better over like a bright green or something like that to kind of give it like the turquoise tint but it doesn't quite do the job for like the overall jade look that i was looking for uh but you know when it's all said and done it comes out nice uh, you'll see I went back through and did the ponytails, kind of touch them up a little bit on the other sides. And now all that's left is little tips. Here I'm doing a second coat of Tesseract uh, Green. And uh, all that's doing, Tesseract Glow, it's just basically like filling out the rest of the panel. 
but you'll notice when it's all said and done that because I stored them upside down after that initial coat, the darkest part will be at the top and then it'll kind of like fade out on the sides. So uh, now here I'm going through with, um, uh, what is the gold? No, it looks like I'm using a darker green at first here, doing like the little leaves on the uh, cloak uh, for the shield captain. And then I go through afterwards. Here I actually do mix a little bit of paint. Um, I just go from basically like a dark green, uh, almost like a dark angel's green or Caliban green all the way up to like a yellow. Um, and just kind of like dot little bits, like progressively less and less so that it sort of looks like little leaves. And then I go through afterwards with the Rackarth flesh and do like the little banner bit that's on there. Uh, and then kind of there's a little spot with some gold on there I do as well. So, uh, but take your time, you know, pick out little details where necessary. Uh, when it's all said and done, like I said, the most important thing is just being efficient. Uh, and here I'm doing all the gold. Another important thing that I've learned after years or uh, taught myself or learned from other people, whatever you want to call it, a little trick of the trade is uh, you want to paint from the inside out. So when I'm painting stuff, I typically like in this case, it's not really that big a deal as I have so many sub assemblies. But, um, you know, if you're like painting a guy, you want to paint the hard to reach parts first. So like the tucked away parts of the armor, like the parts that are away from like the sunlight like all that stuff that's like blocked by other little bits of your model. Uh, you know, you paint that first and then the easier stuff is all left for last. That way, if you've made any mistakes, you made them on the tough stuff. And then when you go to paint like the easy stuff, it's easy to reach, easy to get to. Uh, you know, it's brighter and you can kind of do like the last little bits of highlights and whatnot. So. Uh, so here we're going back through with that silver and just doing like the metal of the bolters and then oh actually i think all the silver is done now i think we're just doing a wash so i'm using the uh, nullin oil and i'm going back through on all the silver and just putting little dips of uh, nullin oil just kind of darken all that up and give it like that little three-dimensional effect and you'll notice how much easier uh that little head sprue i have set up is uh, and why i use that for all my commissions well really for everything uh it's just so much more convenient and uh, here i'm just knocking out super washing everything uh, once again, that's just the nullin oil over uh, the silver. And it really brings out like the depth in everything, uh, especially once you've used, like I said, like slightly watered down uh, lead belcher in this case. Uh, you know, it really like brings the depth out because now you have essentially like, you know, the darker spots where the lead belcher went down in the cracks and then they're extra dark where you put the nullin oil and then the brighter spots where the, uh, you know, lead belcher didn't like coat totally good. So it kind of has like a lighter silver color to it. Uh, so it kind of saves you from having to do like extra highlights and whatnot, but still gives you the same effect. Uh, so, you know, you're turning like one paint into like five uh, by the time you wash it. So you got one paint, one wash, and like five different tones of silver. Uh, and still going through here, doing all the uh, lead belcher and uh, just about finishing up with the majority of it. Uh, you can see, obviously, as I'm doing it, how much it makes like the silver bits stand out. And, uh, you know, again, I think when it's all said and done, I probably use like 10 paints on this whole commission. You kind of see the glow of the uh, green there. And uh, you'll see later on when it's all finished up. And I do like the little dot. And, uh, you know, I typically put like static pictures up on my Facebook page as well. So if you never checked out the Facebook page, uh, it's Warhammer Man Studios as well. I typically put like HD static pictures up there also. Or I'll put one as like a thumbnail for the video. But uh, I don't have the best camera for all this stuff. Uh, I have like a nicer one than I got, but it's just a pain. It doesn't auto zoom all the time. Like, you know, it's it's tough to determining like what camera you need and what kind of equipment and lighting and all that stuff uh, to get everything perfect. So when it's all said and done, a lot of these videos don't have the absolute best quality. Uh, but, you know, it's more about demonstrating like the actual purpose and then seeing the final product. You don't need to see like how perfect every little step is. Uh, but it is very clear, obviously, as you watch these videos that I don't make a lot of errors as I uh, barely have to go back through and like touch stuff up. And again, that's me just being careful and paying attention to the parts that I have already painted that are finished. Uh, that way I don't mess them up. And then also just letting like the uh, paints and the washes do their thing to kind of fix up any little mistakes. So you don't have to get like every tiny little crack painted perfectly. If you know a wash is going to go down and fill it out uh, the same way that, uh, you know, like everything doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, if you're going to go back to and put a highlight on, if you didn't quite get a little bit on the tip of something or whatever, not a big deal as well. So uh, here I'm doing the uh, Reichland flesh, uh, going back through and uh, doing all the, I did the red first on the missiles and now I'm doing all the gold here with Reichland flesh. And uh, once again, it's doing the same thing as the Nolan oil did. Uh, just giving you like multi-tone for that same color and kind of fixing any like small little mistakes you have. There's lots of like tiny little bits um, 
especially on like the helmets and a couple on the bikes that you have to paint gold and uh they're not always going to look perfect but uh just having a little bit of that Reichland flesh kind of fill in the shadows and everything uh you know makes up for any small mistakes you have and if you do make some mistakes it's not a big deal go back and fix them uh but you know obviously efficiency is all about uh just keeping it clean and the first coat and uh you know keeping that pinky out there to stabilize everything so uh, you can really see obviously like the depth of color and everything is uh starting to take effect uh you can also see what my plastic bag looks like now and uh you know what uh what basically like what a wet palette would look like now um you know it'd be starting to get chunky and i'd be having to put more water in it and you know all kind of different problems with it in this case i'm just going to work through this commission and when it's done i just get to throw it away and i can pull out another plastic baggie no problem so uh but yeah just a little more of the uh Reichland flash obviously commission is coming along very nicely here uh getting close to the end here um and then uh you know basically once all the painting is finished and everything is adequately dry i'll be able to uh, cut out all the little bits and uh you know turn the sub assemblies into like final assemblies and uh you know obviously at the end we'll kind of show off uh the finished product as well and uh you know you can essentially see the commission sort of up close and everything uh still using the same camera but just like the finished product and then again you check out those static videos as well if you want and uh, this was actually a uh, commission from my ebay store uh you know you can obviously purchase anything on the ebay store uh same name as well warhammer man studios or uh you know obviously uh, contact through facebook uh you do save about like 10 or 15 percent uh, in ebay fees if you just go through facebook i give you the deal essentially as if i didn't have to pay the fees because i don't um and uh you know pretty good time on uh, how long it takes to complete a commission i know some people will keep you waiting for like six months or a year or not tell you or you might never get your models um you know i'm always working straight through the queue i do have a pretty solid like backlog but um you know typically can make things happen uh by a deadline if necessary but uh you know work pretty fast and uh literally paint every day i love it i love the enjoyment people get out of uh getting the models from me and uh, obviously i love that i get to do this full time as well so and also, if you're new to the channel, uh, make sure that you like and subscribe. I do everything from like commission painting videos to unboxings, reviews, uh, all kind of cool customizations. I have no problem showing off my tips and tricks, uh, you know, colors, techniques, etc. So if you're ever curious, I uh, highly recommend that you ask questions, uh, leave comments. Uh, it really does help out the channel. We're coming up on almost a thousand subscribers. Uh, we are over 900 subscribers, which is absolutely phenomenal uh super pumped the amount of enthusiasm and everything i get um although the majority of the people actually are from like the necromunda side which is probably the smallest side of the community i've done a few different uh kill team videos and uh, my primary focus is actually like warmer 40,000. but uh you know we've done videos on uh everything so if you have friends that might be interested in uh, any of this type of stuff uh pretty much anything games workshop anything painting related or conversion related or magnetization related uh, I'm into it, so make sure you share with your friends and, uh, you know, recommend them the uh, channel as well, as I will greatly appreciate it. So, uh, as you can see, uh, we're getting very, very close to completion here. Uh, I'm just doing a couple of, like, the little dots. Uh, so, basically, the uh, dots are going to be, like, uh, in this case, green. Uh, it's, like, the little gems on them. Uh, sorry, everything's, like, slightly out of focus, but I have to, like, get a little closer to my face so I can see. And uh, camera does not always love that. So, I'm basically just going through and doing the gemstones. I do this in three steps. I start with like a dark green uh, and then I do a light green after that. So the uh, dark green will cover the entire gemstone. The light green will cover like the bottom right hand court portion of the gemstone. And then the uh, white, tiny little white dot will go in the upper left hand corner. So it's dark everywhere and then it's like progressively lighter towards the bottom right. And then I put a tiny little white dot all the way up in the top left. And I do the same thing for the computer screens as well. I put like two coats of that Tesseract Glow. Uh, with them flipped upside down the first coat uh, regular with the second coat and then a uh, little dot in the upper left hand corner and then i also have like uh, some cool pictures of um like little computer screens with like writing on them that i do as well um you know if you want to see how to do some stuff like that uh, you can check out like the rogue trader set i've done like the little computer screen so it looks like there's a little like computer print like glowing across them uh, and you can kind of see like little words on the screens etc and uh, once again, it's just about like taking your time and, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're not actually writing out like little words or anything, but you're just like tricking the eye into seeing like the different colors, uh, you know, and that gives your eye like the impression that basically there's actual words on there that you obviously would never be able to read because they're tiny little screens. So, 
Uh, so just about finished up here. We are definitely getting towards the end. Um, definitely feeling it after uh, these long hours of uh, working on this bad boy. But, uh, you know, like anything, uh, completion for me is always the most rewarding part. Um, you know, it's fun to work on something. But, you know, back in the day, I would always like partially paint everything or not paint it at all. I preferred like assembling and converting stuff. So I would have a ton of like super cool converted stuff. Some of it partially painted, some of it not even close to painted, um, but never finish anything. Uh, in this case, it's the opposite. I uh, love the basing. That's like one of my favorite parts is doing custom bases. And then, uh, you know, obviously like the reward of just finishing a project, wrapping it up, um, you know, feels extremely well when you know something's done and you get to look at it and it's completed and just looks awesome. So, uh, you know, obviously that's why I enjoy doing this so much. I know a lot of people have other jobs. They don't have the time, effort, or even skill. Uh, to focus on uh, something like this, it might take them months or years or a lifetime to paint up uh, an army or even a small commission like this. Um, as where, uh, you know, with me, they can get it in a couple months. And uh, like I said, it takes me like, this was about like a little less than 24 hours straight uh, of actual painting broken up into a couple sessions. But, um, you know, in 24 hours, uh, the majority of the time that you're waiting is really just for your turn. So... Uh, in this case, this was an eBay purchase, and I kind of worked this one in on the side of like large army commissions I was doing. Um, so I think the turnaround time on this was about 45 days uh, from purchase to delivery. Uh, it's typically not that quick for larger commissions, uh, but like for terrain and smaller commissions like this, I'm able to work it in on the sides of like army commissions, as I almost always have like a two to four thousand point army or two or three uh, in line. So uh, you know, it's nice to just kind of do something a little different and get it out the door. Although it seems like lately the uh, the most popular things have been terrain sets. People have been loving the terrain sets, which is awesome uh, for Kill Team and 40K. And then uh, also Adeptus Custodes and Sisters of Battle seem like everybody just wants them nonstop. Uh, I know they're both pretty good in this edition also. Adeptus Custodes are super resilient, so everybody loves them. Uh, Sisters of Battle uh, are inexpensive power armor and hit hard uh so like that's really good and then i know like now a lot of people are combining the two of them uh sisters have been working really well like splashed them with other armies uh but in this case like uh, i know there's a couple armies that have done well sisters battle and custodes uh no notice like a couple little armies and uh some battle reports using them that looked like pretty good and uh, obviously like you know the more times people see certain paint schemes that i've done or uh, specific uh, previous commissions and I have a listing available, uh, makes it easier to purchase it if you have like the ability to just uh, grab that up. So, uh, But I did have a cool little Pariah Nexus project that I recently completed, uh, a bunch of like custom 3D prints for like the terrain set in between. I uh, highly recommend you check out that video. Finally got everything uh, painted up. I say finally, it's only been out for a couple weeks, but uh, got everything painted up, uh, including the heavy intercessors and captain. Um, unfortunately, uh, the Necrons were broken or miscast. Um, the what's it called pyromancer or whatever had a miscast i'm still waiting on games workshops reluctance to replace that model um and then uh the necro necron flayed ones were like broken there was like two different broken bits there was actually one bit missing and then like an arm completely broken off so uh hopefully they will finally get their customer service together uh, as they will do anything they possibly can to avoid like having to replace stuff uh which with broken models whatever i get it they want you to just glue it or talk to the person you got it from but, uh, you know, it was sold out on their website immediately. Uh, and it said, like, um, no longer available online. So I went through a third-party vendor. And then it came back, like, right afterwards. Uh, so it's not really my fault. I didn't go through them. Also, they don't offer any form of discount. And a lot of places, otherwise, you can get 15 or 20% off in the U.S. So they should incentivize people if they want you to buy directly from them by, one, having, like, some kind of benefit, like a discount or something like that. And, uh, you know, two, if something is miscast, uh, there should be no questions asked. It's a factory error. They should just replace it. But regardless of that, they know they're not going to lose you as a customer because their models are awesome and their game is awesome. And, you know, I do this for a job. So obviously they can just treat me however they want and I have to keep coming back, unfortunately. Uh, but, you know, longevity wise, that's not the best thing. So uh, you can see here, I'm just going through and putting all the sub assemblies together, working everything out, uh, gluing all the stuff. I uh, glue the riders to the bikes and everything, the arms, all that good stuff. Uh, but I do not obviously glue the magnetized lances and, uh, you know, the bottoms of the bases. Uh, in this case, I'm going to bust out the actual bases here shortly as well. Uh, these bases were just created um, on the side also. 
probably go into like that 24 hours of time it took me on the whole commission um uh, or somewhere around there but uh you know i didn't actually show it off in this video specifically as i've done videos on how to make the ruined temple style bases uh previously as well so and i recently did a different adeptus custodes commission uh with uh like some different style bases uh dead tau commander uh crisis suit on one of them which was pretty cool so uh I highly recommend you go check that out uh, as that came out pretty cool and was a specific request of one of my clients also. So uh, just running through the super glue. I use the disposable kind of super glue. Um, you know, obviously you couldn't use plastic glue if you were going to do this as you need to use plastic glue on direct plastic to plastic. Uh, but I do try to go through and make sure to uh, like scratch off the paint here. I'm doing it right here. Uh, so I get good connections. Uh, sometimes like the little ponytails in specific will like pop off uh, when I'm shipping them. But it's not actually like a break. It's more like just peeling off the paint that's on there. And then you just have to put like a little dab of paint and it will uh, fix those little ponytails. But they sure are a pain. Um, sometimes it's worse than others. It really depends how UPS handles them. But, uh, you know, I package everything extremely, extremely well. Like bubble wrap each individual model and then bubble wrap the bubble wrap and then bubble wrap that bubble wrap. And then put it inside like double box. So make sure everything shows up how it should. Uh, but here I'm just going through and uh, essentially just putting all the arms together and everything. And uh, I will put on the shields here in a moment. Just about finished with the assemblies here. And uh, we are almost to the actual completion uh, of this. Uh, and before I get out of here, I am going to pin the uh, final video. And it will be me talking when I was showing off the commission upon completion. Uh, but I do want to remind you to make sure to like and subscribe uh, if you like these videos. If you like... Uh, you know watching how i do this step by step seeing every little bit and uh the colors and conversions and other videos are always available for you to see um warhammer man studios make sure you like subscribe and share with your friends and uh you know even if you just like my voice and uh the soothing sounds of the narrated uh commission while i fast forward through this beast uh you know start to finish uh you know go ahead and uh, give us a like share whatever i'd greatly appreciate it and I definitely appreciate all the support I've had over this past year. A uh, little over a year now we've had the channel. And, uh, you know, since then, you know, business was already good. Now it is absolutely booming. Um, and uh, I really appreciate everybody that has gotten a commission from us in the past or gets one in the future. As, uh, you know, that allows me to do this full time. Uh, you know, allows us to do this full time. And uh, allows you to do what you're good at. Do your job. And still get to play the game how it's meant to be. With fully painted, fully based awesomeness. So... Uh, speaking of fully based, uh, that's about all the sub assemblies getting ready to uh, throw these bad boys on their bases. You will notice that the jet bikes are already magnetized and ready to go. And, uh, you know, they will just uh, snap on no problem and can easily be shipped. Uh, these are just the regular flight stands right here. But in a moment, I'm going to uh, put the actual real bases on there. And uh, you can see what these bad boys look like completed. Warhammer Man Welcome Studios. Welcome back to the channel. Warhammer, Warhammer Man. Man. Back in the and studio I'm with another completed commission. Uh, this one is an Adeptus Custodes uh, Army Commission. Uh, it's just a small force of three of the Veritus Braided jet bikes, one of our custom Shield Captain jet bikes, and then five Adeptus Custodes uh, sword and board or sword and shield uh, models. Uh, in this case, we did the typical magnetization of the bases and the uh, lance arms for the Custodes. And then also, uh, this one is using our custom made. Uh, ruined temple bases uh, if you're new to the channel highly recommend that you like and subscribe for regular content feel free to share with your friends uh, i always have uh, posted up video in the video description uh, the paints that i used in the order that i use them and then also which style basing i'm using uh, and then you can go back to my previous videos and i demonstrate exactly how i make the bases in all my videos uh, not to mention all the color schemes that i do and then uh, like how I did the conversions on the Shield Captain jet bike, how I do the magnetization of the jet bike's flight stands, and then also their arms for easy transport. Uh, so just kind of uh, taking a closer look here. I uh, don't mind the paint all over me. Uh, this is the drilled out bottom of the bike. And then we have our magnet attached here on the top there. And then as you can see, uh, he securely attaches to the actual base itself. Uh, and then if you take a look here, we have the lance arm and same deal as well. It is magnetized right there on the bottom so that now you can, during gameplay, you can easily shift him to the side if you need to put the base up against uh, something. Or uh, say, for instance, you have him up against someone and the spear is in the way, you can easily like pose it up to the top or bottom 
uh, not to mention obviously uh, you know you can change the pose and the look of the bike uh, you know just for like pictures or whatever so uh, here we have um, this one is obviously one of our customizations uh, nothing too serious here but we had the uh, cape from the shield captain uh, Deptus Custodes custodian guard sprue and then we also have uh, added on uh, the wings are from the um, custodian guard sprue as well for like the uh, standard vexilla and then we also add one shield on the top here uh, like clean it up a little bit and clip it on so we get like that uh, flush sit like uh, setting on top there uh, and then you'll notice these are a combination of the citadel contrast paints and also our uh, citadel uh, like metallics so the overall contrast like white um, is used for the actual model itself and then we used our uh, retributor armor gold and then uh, also the uh, lead belcher for the silver and then you'll see we have like tesseract glow uh, for like the screens and stuff like that and then uh, you know another one of them uh, for the spear and everything so it's a nice combination of how the metallics and regular paint line can blend with uh, the um, contrast paints um, I'm a big fan of them. I think they look great overall. And then obviously like our customized bases and all the skulls and all that good stuff as well. So, And I think obviously these models came out great. Uh, this is one of my uh, more common or more standard uh, paint schemes. Definitely a big fan of it. Uh, you know, it's like a lot different than your typical like all gold custodian guard, uh, Deptus Custodes uh, look. Definitely gives like a little bit more of a... You know, you still get the effect of the gold and everything, but it's just not that like same monotonous, like all metallic color. Uh, I'm a big fan of it. I like it. Uh, it's a nice, um, you know, standard process. Uh, and in this specific case of this commission, I actually filmed the entire process of uh, not the actual build itself, but the entire painting process. Uh, so I will be uh, slightly editing that and then I'm going to post up like a sped up version of the video. Uh, so you can basically just see me go through and, uh, you know, methodically like uh, assembly line paint this entire uh, commission uh, from start to finish. So uh, that'll be a cool little thing coming in the future there. Or perhaps you just watch that and this is the end of the video right now. Uh, if you're new to the channel, make sure you like and subscribe. Feel free to share this video or others on social media with your friends. Uh, and then obviously uh, you can find our store on eBay or always contact us through Facebook if uh, you're interested in a specific commission. Or you can uh, get a hold of us in the comments uh, with any questions you have, uh, recommendations for future videos, or uh, you know any other inquiries as well. So uh, well, there you have it, guys. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and this is our Adeptus Custodes Veritus Praetor and uh, Shield Captain, as well as the Custodian Guard Commission, and I'm out of here.